The Lord be with you. And with Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, The man who can be trusted in little things can be trusted in great. The man who is dishonest in little things will be dishonest in great. If then you cannot be trusted with money, that dating thing, who will trust you with genuine riches? And if you cannot be trusted with what is not yours, who will give you what is your very own? No servant can be the slave of two masters. He will either hate the first and love the second, or treat the first with respect and the second with scorn. You cannot be the slave both of God and of money. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, good morning. It's my joy to be here again today, this morning, to celebrate this Holy Mass of the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Today, the liturgy of the Word speaks about justice, justice for all, especially for the poor, and about wisdom in using wealth. First of all, justice for all, and especially for the poor. We have heard the first reading. The prophet Amos is considered as one of the minor prophets, but not certainly because he's less important than the other prophets, but just because his book is quite short when we compare to the book of Isaiah, of Ezekiel, or Jeremiah. Isaiah has uh, 60 chapters, uh, Ezekiel, Jeremiah as well, but Amos is just a short book of, I think, nine chapters. But his message may be rightly considered as one of the most powerful messages with regard to the specific issue of social justice. The prophet Amos lived nearly eight centuries before Christ, and yet his message did not lose anything of its originality and sharpness. What was this message about? Today's first reading, we heard, listen to this, you who trample on the needy and try to suppress the poor people of the country, you who say, when will the new moon be over so that we can sell our corn and Sabbath so that we can market our wheat. Then by lowering the bushel, raising the shekel, by swindling and tempering with the scales, we can buy up the poor for money. So in other words, the prophet is expressing the intentions, the deeds, speculations of some of the business people of that time who were eagerly waiting for the best opportunities like expert in dealing with the stock exchange, to invest, to buy, and to sell. And furthermore, he is pointing out the evil practices of those who, at his time, intentionally play with the market rules and laws, making the effort small and the shekel great, practicing deceit with false balances buying the poor and the needy, meaning they were falsifying prices and values. They were engaging themselves in any kind of trafficking, including human trafficking, just for one purpose, money, money, money again and again. Of course, to the expense of the poor people whom they sell 
and buy for a pair of sandals, meaning like a cheap commercial item. The prophet Amos then warned those people who suck the blood of the poor. He said, the Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, if we are tempted to think that this message and warning only belongs to ancient times, we certainly might be mistaken. Because in fact, social justice is so urgent and necessary now, perhaps even more than in the prophet's time. Furthermore, it has reached such a global scale in our globalized world that we certainly cannot pretend that we do not see the increasing gap between rich and poor unless we renounce to be authentic disciples of Christ. As we know, the predilection of, for the poor is the key point of the gospel and also the key point of the teaching of our beloved Pope Francis. He never ceases to call us to take action, not just to remain in words, but to make justice possible, especially in this year of mercy. So, brothers and sisters, dear friends, let us try our best to learn to practice justice and mercy, especially this year of mercy. We know what we call the corporal works of mercy and also spiritual works of mercy. Corporal works of mercy are feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, visit the sick and those in prison, bury the dead, and give alms to the poor. And the spiritual works of mercy are counsel the doubtful, instruct the ignorant, admonish the sinner, comfort the sorrowful, forgive injuries, bear wrongs patiently, pray for the living and the dead. So perhaps each of us here today, in order not to let the word of God forgotten, we can try to put into practice at least one, at least one of those works of mercy during the forthcoming week. For example, sharing a good book or a good movie or even uh, going for a walk with somebody who may be lonely or uh, invite somebody who is in need to attend Holy Mass or trying our best never to judge anybody. For example, sending a card, an email, or some gift, gift to somebody who is suffering, or going to confession, because going to confession is not only to, to ask forgiveness for our sins, confession is a powerful school where we can learn to forgive others. And trying never ever to, to pay back or to take revenge or offering a holy mass for, for people, for our beloved ones, or praying the holy rosary of divine mercy, and so on and so on. There are so many examples we can do. So I'm just asking ourselves today, let us try our best during this forthcoming week to practice these works of mercy, at least one, because maybe we cannot do all of them at the same time. So first point, justice for all, and especially justice for the poor. Secondly, wisdom in using money. The gospel ends with this remark, which sounds like a warning. You cannot serve God and wealth. As the saying goes, money is an excellent servant, but an evil master. We know that God, our loving Father, wants to, he, he wants to make us associates of his works of creation. He wants to make us administrators of the universe and all the goods it contains. 
So we are there for administrators. Administration means it doesn't belong to us. We are just, uh, yes, we are administrators, so we have to respond one day of our administration. So let us learn the signs of administration. Let us learn the signs of love and charity. Let us learn how to use wisely and prudently anything we have as a mean to reach the heart of our brothers and sisters and to please God. The Holy Gospel warns us again, what good will it be for someone to, go, to gain the whole world, yet for fight their soul? And we can say, what, can, what use will it be to be a millionaire, billionaire, if one day we have to lose our souls? So let us try our best to use whatever we have in order to please God and to be one day with him in heaven. Justice for all and especially for the poor. Wisdom in using wealth. And talking about social justice and wisdom to use money, we cannot fail to raise our eyes to the leaders of the nations because it is certainly not an easy task to rule a country. Even when you have a small family of two, four people, it's not easy. It is not easy to rule a country. It is not easy to be in high position in the society because always we have so many urgent challenges to deal with at the same time. Education, health, family, corruption, security, and so on. And it's almost the same in all the countries. So St. Paul urges us to pray for those who are in high position in public service. First of all, I urge that prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high position, position so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. So let us therefore pray for the leaders of the world, and especially for this country, so that all may be inspired by the sense of justice, justice for all, and especially justice for the poor people. Brothers and sisters, we know that justice is not just a word. According to our faith, justice is the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the only one who is just. Poverty is not just a situation in our life. Because we know that, we know that Jesus is really the one who is poor. So if we wish to be just and to care for the poor, let us raise our eyes to Jesus Christ. Let us contemplate his face. Let us let our lives be faithful imitation of the life of Jesus Christ. To be just is to be Christ-like. To care for the poor is to care for Jesus Christ himself. May Mary, his mother, our mother, intercede for us so that putting into practice today's word of God, we may be truly builders constructors of justice for all, especially for the poor, and we may be wise enough to make money, wealth, not the goals of our life, but instruments of our salvation. Amen.